plaintiff, Elamisha Gates, says when she met the defendant, it was love at first sight. But it wasn't until after the defendant moved in that she realized he was an abusive alcoholic. Elamisha is suing her ex for unpaid rent and emotional distress because he set her up to be falsely arrested on a gun charge. Defendant Maurice Abdullah says when he met Elamisha, she was selling drugs. Maurice claims Elamisha is so violent that she once cut him, and he's countersuing for unreturned property, damaged property, and emotional distress. Start with you. Um, first of all, I fell in love with Mr. Abdullah like at first sight. We met back in... Why? I mean, when? <laughs> I'm sorry. When? <laughs> I meant to say when. I I'll definitely me, don't sorry. know why. I to say when. Sometime you mentioned <laughs> well, when. Well, uh, this sorry. happened in December. Um, I allowed him to move in with me. No, you didn't. In, my, in front of my kids. You know, I'd never bring anyone into my home, but I tried it out. I didn't know he was very jealous. Oh, no. Nice. Didn't know let that he... Finish. Let her finish. I'll let you respond. Go ahead. Didn't know that he had an alcohol problem. Uh, what type of things were going on while he was living with you? Well, we constantly fought all the time. About and, what? The uh, type of about things? anything. He was very jealous. I couldn't even go to the nail shop with my kid or my other daughter. She graduated. She's at Clark University. We had some stuff going on with her. Every time I had something to do with my kids, it was jealousy. You was, was jealous of your children, not just jealous of men. I thought maybe you meant I jealous of like men. I feel like I didn't want to think that at first, but every time I had something to do with my kids, and, and men too, no men, friends, no, he was just jealous about everything. Go ahead. Um, he's pulled a gun on me twice. He's always drunk. When was that? Um, I can't remember the exact date. One was around my daughter's graduation. What was that incident regarding? Well, he came home from work. He works at a nightclub where he sells drugs at also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what type so, of drugs? Um, he sells Molly, weed, and I don't know what else. Yeah. Everybody in his club sells drugs. So everybody they, sells. Everybody. In his club, his so who employees. Uses yeah, no who problem. uses it? The customers. Hey, Anna. The customers. <laughs> right, recycle. Him and all Go of ahead. his employees. Oh, you mean all the staff at the club yes. sells drugs. Right. All right. To the customers. Oh, yeah. This I know for a fact. So, it's a lot right. Sell so what was, you asked me something else before that. Right. Go ahead. You Get asked it. me something else before that. Um, I was asking, you've been buying that weed from him. You didn't forget. <laughs> uh, I, was I was talking about the gun he pulled on you. <laughs> yes, and he was intoxicated that day. He often gets drunk. What was that about, And though? says that he doesn't remember. I can't remember what we were arguing about. Okay. We argued so much. But he was so intoxicated, Judge Mathis, I pushed gun. him to the ground both times. Gun could have went off or anything. It's my fault because I was stupid in love, and I kept putting up with it. I was just happy to have somebody to love me and somebody to help, okay. you know? And um, when did you all break up and why? We broke up on August the 9th because this was like my final straw. Me and my daughter, it was the day before getting ready for uh, school to go back. I take her to get her hair done and her nails. He had three cars at the time, so he follows me down to the nail shop, buses <laughs> in, drunk. It was just 11 o'clock in the morning. He was already intoxicated. Ooh. Mind you, we so, had yeah. been drinking. He had been, been drinking. drinking the day or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> you act like it, sir. You over there, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, when, when we got the argument that morning, because you know, we hear somebody lying like that, just really just tickle you. That's not a normal reaction. <laughs> it to me it is, because it's, it's to you. It's not the truth. Okay, it's right. not the well, truth. Sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It's two sides to every story. So. Once so, again, you broke up how and why? Because uh, he started getting drunk that morning because we were arguing about me going to a party mm -hmm. previously that night for a friend. He told me I can use his car because the washing machine and dryer broke to go wash the clothes and take the baby to get her nails done. Next thing I know, he pulling up at the nail shop, giving me my keys, showing out in front of my daughter and the nail techs. So I ran outside, we got to Oregon. I tried to give him the keys, he said, never mind, because I had so many clean clothes in the back. So we live right down the street from there. When me and my daughter, and mind you, my 12-year-old was watching all of this. That's what's the bad mm -hmm. part. Well, by the time we get to our house, he's packing all of his stuff. My baby is still with me. He's already got a majority of his things in the trunk. Why is he suddenly moving or what have you? You all breaking argue, up. This has happened all the time. It does. This time, I, like I said, he was drunk. I don't know if He's always both, drunk, you said. Right. <laughs> I don't know if we both had just had enough, but he was I was extra drunk that yes. day. Maybe. And this is my thing, Judge Mathis. I feel like we could have worked through anything, but you cannot disrespect in front of my child. That's a 
that will send me back to my old self. And I, I, I used to be a bad girl back in the day, but now I've got a bachelor's degree. Oh, I'm good. working. I'm in the medical field. I haven't been in trouble in 10 years. I'm busy looking for the enemies in the street, and I'm sleeping with it. Let me allow him to talk some, and then we'll okay. get further into what yep, you were saying. So you want to give me some background? Yes, Your Honor. First of all, none of this is true as far as she stated. I'm not an alcoholic. Because I work at a bar and run a bar, I don't mean I be drunk every day. Um, it's not my type of diet anyway. She's the drug dealer. I met her in my club selling drugs. Didn't know at first that she was a drug dealer. Uh, someone told me not to mess with her, but I didn't take heed. They say, if you buy a man's shoes, he'll walk out of a woman's life. You buy a woman's shoes, she'll walk on your car and, and, and cut you in the car. She cut you? Yes, sir, she cut me. Oh, oh. Go ahead, what else? Uh, this particular day she's talking about, I had just got off work. I asked her where she was. She says, I'm at the line, I mean, I, I'm at the, the, the nail shop. Yes, so I get there. She came out fussing, screaming, and swinging. That's why I got the car, went to the house to get the few things that I had over there to get away from this. Because she came to my job, cussed my boss out, what was that about? Why would she come to your job? Because I asked for my car back. It's 1.30 in the morning. I know how hard she sleeps when she off that molly and stuff. So wow. I asked for her to bring me my car. She said, Damn, if you want your car, come get it. So I hung up the phone, had my security take me up to the house, get the car. So she was surprised that I came to get the car. She pulls out her pants, moons me, with everybody <laughs> outside, no panties on. I made a little comment. She got mad. I got back to the club. Within five minutes, I don't know how she got eight miles up the road in five minutes. But when I came out the back, she was at the bar. The scene got so bad, we had to put her out the club. We put her out the club, because she cussed out the owner, didn't cuss me out. We put her out the club. I'm thinking after 30 minutes, she's gone. I come out, she's sitting on my car, yeah, yeah, it's going down. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> security, security, you can call your security. I said, please. Every time I tried to get in the car, she would run up on How me. How did it end? She gets in the car. My security tall, so she's sitting in the back seat. We're driving down the road. Next thing I know, a knife come out of nowhere. I slams on brakes. Me and him jump out of the car. I slam the car and park. We jump out. We scared, heart beating fast. Two men, because she got a knife. She was so scared that I was going to call the police on her that I didn't. I let her walk on down the hill to the house, because we was halfway to where she stays at. All right, so that's enough of this story. Now, let me ask you, <laughs> did you go up to his job? Let's, let's start there. In did you my go up defense, to his job, pardon? I did go to his job, but first Started he... Started some mess? No, 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 it wasn't like he said. First, he came to my home and took his car keys, and my daughter was there. He could care less that she was upstairs asleep, show his butt. So he took his car keys, and I'm just like, can I have my house keys? This is what we went through all the time. I can't drive your car, but you got three cars, but you run around with my house key. Why should I have to ask somebody else for a ride? So I went up to his job to ask for my key. We did not argue right away. We didn't get into an argument until we got in the parking lot. I never said nothing to his boss. Ma'am, what are you suing for on the emotional distress and the rent? Yes. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, my rent was six fifty, but mm -hmm. it's $50 dollar late fee. Um, when we first moved in, I paid February, March, and April. What month I just, does he owe for? He owes for just August because he did help June. How much was his share? He did share? help July, three fifty because it was a late fee. Right. And, and what um, emotional distress does he Emotional distress is that I went to jail, Judge Mathis. I'm a convicted felon. Go, I'm went not to supposed jail for to, what? And what does he have, have to gun. do with it? And I'll show you the police report, but um, the police allow him, since they said legally he lives here too, you have to do an eviction. I've done that eviction. I've done the restraining order. They let him come in and get the rest of his things, which he didn't have anything left in there. But um, he kept telling them, even though I don't sell drugs, I want to show you where the drugs at. She got a gun in here. I had no idea that he had a gun in my home. He went through my whole house, even my 12-year-old daughter room. And I'm like, why How did they call you emotional why distress? You, you say you were arrested? Because I went to jail. Yeah, he How went long? In, he, um, I was just in there for two days with and no bond. I had to pay the bond to get out. All right, you uh, say you have a police report. So what are you saying? He set you up he saying did. that you had and guns you, in the house? Yep, <laughs> and if you read the police report, you'll see that they wrote Whose almost gun exactly was it? what happened. It her was granddaddy's. His gun. No. Her granddaddy's, Your his Honor. His fingerprints are the she only two one that's on it. She got two of you them. see your police report. And I Sir, specifically... what do you say to the rent in the... Uh, I don't know, Your Honor. Um, I didn't stay there. I, I got my middle <laughs> state where I stay at. Wait a minute. Uh, Your Honor. Here's a cable bill proving that he did live here. 
I did that cable for her daughter because she was oh. going to, she was having a problem with math. Mm -hmm. I did it for and her daughter. Even, right. Judge Mathis, even though well, you I did it for presumption her that you lived there, sir. No, sir, I didn't live there. I'm telling you, there's a presumption. I'm oh. looking right at it. I presume you yes, did. Sir. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm looking at this police report. She said you set her up uh, by lie, saying she had a gun in the house. Gates and Abdullah have lived in the same apartment for almost a year. That's, that's, what the that's police, a hum Maybe they dreamed mm. it up. They were there. You were there. You they told didn't ask them. me that, you're right. I got you. I know they didn't. That's they right. both stated they they have <laughs> ongoing. It, they both stated they have had ongoing issues, and Abdullah frequently leaves, saying he will not return, and then later comes back to live in the apartment with Gates again. This is they both stated. That's what they say. And Abdullah stated he wants to retrieve his property from the apartment, even though you don't live, they just want to retrieve the property. Um, he a, was concerned watch. that Gates would attempt to hide some of his property. His property, you say you didn't have it because you don't live there. <laughs> we entered the apartment. <laughs> where, we entered the apartment where all parties had agreed Abdullah would peacefully grab his property and move. I know you didn't live there. Though. <laughs> Before entering. Before entering, Abdullah had stated Gates had guns in the apartment. Okay, so you bring that out. Nope. Well, oh, the police lying on you? I didn't say that, sir. You said, nope. I said, you brought out the fact that there were guns in the house. While looking for his property, Abdullah was in the kitchen closet. He looked in every corner, container, the trash can, clothing piled up behind boxes and then up near the ceiling. He reached into a hole near the top of the wall and pulled out something wrapped in a brown plastic bag, which he then set on the shelf before turning to look at Officer Emery, who was standing near him. At that point, he recognized the object as a Gun. Abdullah asked Emery what he was going to do. Officer said he wasn't going to do anything because it's not illegal to have a firearm in your hand. Then Abdullah said, yeah, well, she's a convicted felon. Yeah, you set her up. No, I didn't, y'all. Yes, I was looking did. for my daddy's yes, watch. What's your counterclaim for, sir? Uh, for my car, my, which I was looking for my watch and my ring. What did she do? Uh, that's why I was looking in the ceiling because she hid it. That's all I had was my watch and my ring. Mm -hmm. uh, damage to that's my car. That's why you are doing what? I was looking for my watch and my, my daddy's ring. When I was looking through the crates When the and police stuff. were there. Yes. That That's was, what you were looking for. For my watch and my ring, yes. For your watch and your ring. Yes. And you thought it might be up in the ceiling. Your Honor. You thought it might be up in the yes. ceiling. Yes. She had done it before. Your claim is dismissed. Have a good day. You're a liar. <laughs> Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you set you, this man. woman up to go to yeah. jail. You live there with her. Am you looking for your ring up in the ceiling? Uh, Just so minute. happened to be a gun that you point out to the police. Police, here's the gun. Take it to jail. I feel like my mama said, never trust a woman to wear a wig. Never, never trust a drug head. Never trust a woman to sell drugs. And now I know from now on, never trust a woman that looks good because everything good ain't good for you. Never trust a nightclub owner that sell drugs. And baby, this is a sew-in, not a wig. It's not yours. It doesn't matter, I bought it.